guys, Jess here from Tin Can Creative, and today Jay and I are going to do a quick recap on the first six months of living in an RV. We posted a question about what people wanted to know about our first six months on the road over on Instagram, and we were able to answer over on Instagram, but we figured we'd make a video for YouTube to share this information over here as well. So here goes. Before we jump into these questions, let's do a quick recap of where we've been in the last six months. We started our journey off near Scranton, Pennsylvania at the very end of August. That's where we had been working on the Airstream in Jay's mom's driveway. Our drive across the country was rushed, but we took a few days to stop in Springfield, Illinois to visit friends and look at Lincoln stuff. Then we headed west to Sun Valley, where we were met by more friends for various adventures. We spent over three weeks here enjoying the mountains, mountain towns, and hot springs. We then headed to Yellowstone for a few days and got to see many animals stopping traffic and we even got to see a grizzly. After that it was a quick hop over to Teton Valley to Mooch Dock for a week with their friends in Victor, Idaho. Next up was Western Colorado. We found a great boondocking spot outside of Fruta. We had only planned to spend a week here but we fell in love with the area and the biking trails. It made a great base to do some satellite trips to Breckenridge, Telluride, Ridgeway, and Uray. So we ended up spending a month here. At the beginning of November, we headed to Moab to check out some red rocks and of course, to do some mountain biking. We spent another month here until the snows chased us into an RV resort. We knew we were really gonna miss family for the holiday, so we decided to put the Airstream in storage and drove 2,100 miles back to surprise them. After the holidays and after the new year, we headed back to Utah to grab the Airstream and head to Hurricane, pronounced Hurricane for three weeks of biking and being near Zion National Park. We then spent February in a posh RV park in Las Vegas to set up residency and to do things like going to the dentist. While in Vegas, we were blown away by the surrounding wilderness as well as the city's proximity to other great spots. We got to do some satellite trips to Joshua Tree, Palm Desert, and San Diego. We recorded this in Arizona, which we're considering the second six month leg of our journey. So while we've experienced some amazing things in this state, we're not gonna cover them in this video. Now for the questions. It's really hard to pick one spot, though I really enjoyed staying in Rabbit Valley outside of Fruta, Colorado. There were a lot of really neat rocks around and it was the first time I'd ever been around that kind of a desert landscape, so I think Something about it was really special and unique and just being able to hike right outside our front door was super fun. My favorite boondocking spot was in Sun Valley. It was just like eight miles outside of town and it's a pretty ritzy area that we couldn't afford to live there right now. But it was cool to be able to live so closely. We were surrounded by mountains and got to see some beautiful sunsets and sunrises. It's hard though because we've been at so many amazing spots boondocking that Maybe it's just because it was one of the first that we ever stayed at, but it was a pretty special place. Plus, we had a lot of friends there. Favorite thing about living in an RV would probably be the fact that we can move our home around anywhere, change up our views, change up the scenery, get to experience all different sorts of places in a way that's more than just a vacation. We can spend time in a town and explore and really get to know the area. If you're in a place for two to four weeks, you could get a pretty good idea of what it's like to be there. You could talk to some locals, find out the good restaurants, kind of get an idea of like what the real estate is like, um, how people live, what people do there for work, obviously the mountain bike trails. Um, so it really gives you a pretty good understanding of what, what a place is like without having to commit to living there. Some things that are really hard about RV life especially because we boondock quite a bit, would be short showers. When I'm on the toilet, my knees are literally hitting the, the door. I think also living small is great because we don't have as much stuff, but the RV does get messy really quickly, so that's not fun. And of course, not really being close to family and friends is hard. Maybe one of my least favorite things about living in an RV is just how inconsistent your days can be. Sometimes it's hard to be productive because the RV itself has all kinds of needs and things break on it or you need to dump the toilet, get new water or find a place to stay. So if you're trying to work or do things outside of the RV life, it's sometimes really difficult. Just the general maintenance of being on the road and keeping everything going is a huge time sink. 
Keeping in touch with family and friends is definitely something that I thought would be harder than it is, especially with social media, FaceTime, this app that I use a lot called Marco Polo where you could leave a video message for folks. It's really nice because I've been able to keep in touch with a lot of friends and even family through that app and it kind of keeps me connected. I get to see what's going on in everyone's daily life and still feel like they're right down the street. So before this all started, I was really intimidated by backing up a trailer. I was watching YouTube videos. I was playing with like matchbox cars, trying to get an understanding of how the things would move. And after I've been doing it for a little while, I'm actually kind of addicted to it. And I kind of like backing into new places. I mean, it kind of sucks when you get to a place and you're stuck and you have to do a crazy maneuver to get out of it. But just backing into a normal spot is kind of exciting these days. Being able to do laundry. I definitely, in particular, our home was in such a great location. It was in downtown Ithaca and we had awesome neighbors. So that's what I miss about that particular home, our last home that we owned. And then as far as home, like an actual physical structure, probably miss being able to just have two separate bathrooms that Jay and I could use. One person could be using the upstairs toilet and someone could be using the downstairs toilet. Now we have one toilet and it's an RV toilet. And we have the outdoors, I guess, too. <laughs> the thing I miss most about owning a home is being able to throw parties with friends, it's, it's a little harder to have in an RV. Obviously you don't have like as many friends around you when you're on the road, but you also don't have a ton of space. Like you could throw a bonfire and hang out inside of that with some fellow boondockers, but it's not the same as just having some friends over um, on a Friday and having a couple drinks with them and talking about life. So kind of miss that. What surprised me the most was how many friends we actually have gotten to see while living on the road. Each month that we've been on the road so far, we've had friends fly out to come visit us or we've had friends that lived along our route and that's been super awesome to be able to spend time with people and go on bike adventures or exploring different towns and cities. It's been super fun and I think that was very surprising was how much friend time we would actually have. Probably the most surprising thing, and maybe it's because we planned for it and like kind of overbuilt our system a little bit, but I was really nervous about internet access and getting enough speed to, you know, maybe watch something on YouTube or share files on Dropbox or just load web pages. Like this was just an intimidating thing and I knew we were gonna need it for work. So far, so good. Like we've always had a really good signal. Um, there's only really been one time where we had zero signal whatsoever. So that's that's been a, a welcome surprise, positive surprise, is internet easier than I thought. And for anyone who's interested in our internet setup, we're gonna do a video about that. No, we don't regret selling our home. We gave a lot of thought to potentially renting it, but we just figured, hey, we don't want the stress of becoming landlords, and we wanted to live this lifestyle and see where we would land next. I mean, it was from 1880. It was crooked. It was sinking into the earth. Cooper's ball would get stuck under the entertainment center consistently because it just rolled under there every single time. We were in a floodplain. The walls were kind of lumpy. It had beat up aluminum siding. There were a lot of weeds in the backyard. It was fire engine red. Our neighbor actually told us at one point there were raccoons living in the house before we lived in it. It had the worst deck imaginable. Also, we learned that the SWAT team once came to our house before we lived in it as well, not for us. <laughs> we were just so stressed around owning this thing. We were just waiting for the furnace to go out. We were waiting for the wires to catch fire because everything was so old. So I have to say, don't really regret selling it and don't miss it. Tots, 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 tots. But really, tacos. Tacos. Moving on. Knock on wood, we've not had huge issues with the RV in the first six months. But we, there have been mishaps, for example, uh, towing the Airstream on dirt roads where we didn't properly latch the pantry door and a lot of things have fallen out while driving. Uh, a lot of, I think, oatmeal got spilled at one point almost a maple syrup accident, which would have been much worse, but 
that's the worst thing I can remember. Probably the worst thing that happened was we were away from the RV for a few days and it was the temperatures were below freezing and the inlet valve on the toilet cracked. Once it warmed up, it was just kind of dribbling water all over the back of the toilet. So we had to dry all that out in very cold, damp weather and then find a replacement for it, which wasn't the worst thing in the world. You know, nothing major happened, but it was still a frustrating scramble to get everything working again. I definitely want to get a better handle on our finances in the next six months. It was kind of a free-for-all the first six months, especially because we... Jay had just left his full-time job, we were on the road, getting to new towns, and one of the things Jay and I love to do when we get to any new place is to eat food, eat tacos, go visit restaurants and breweries, and all of that costs a lot of money, so we were spending a lot of money eating out, and so I think in the next six months, it would be great to get a better grasp on those uh, finances and just sort of set some budgets. Goes for the next six months, um, maybe get uh, a little bit more efficient each day with a little bit more of a routine um, so we're more productive. That would be great. As we go to new places, make more connections in them, uh, get to know more local people, create more content, like make, make more YouTube videos, make more photographs, maybe do something for some bigger clients. That would be awesome. I would love to update the bathroom. It is probably Jay and I's least favorite room <laughs> in the RV. Just give it a little refreshing look uh, just to make our time on the pot a little more enjoyable. In the next six months, changes to the RV, I'd really like to add a lift kit so we get a little more ground clearance so we wouldn't have to fear going off-road as much. Jay and I had always said to ourselves, oh, we're, we're at least going to do it for a year. And I would agree with that statement, we're at least going to do a year, but I could see us going two, three years uh, living on the road. Maybe more, maybe less. It all kind of depends. I don't know, I could see us being on the road for at least another year and a half, two years, maybe longer. I mean, really liking this lifestyle. It has its hardships, but I feel like if we could minimize those, especially being able to maybe travel back um, and see family a little more often, and that would make it a lot easier to continue this lifestyle because that's the biggest hardship is not seeing friends and family. I would have to say that if this lifestyle is something that you want to go after or maybe not even exactly what we're doing maybe you want to travel part of the year or maybe you want to start your own business maybe you want to be mobile and be able to work from anywhere whatever it is that you want to go after take the steps and start planning now it might seem really far-fetched and out of reach right now because you've got a lot of things going on and you might have a career that you're deep in and you want to change paths and it's not going to happen overnight and I would say just be patient. Be patient, take the steps to plan and you'll eventually get there but you need to take steps now. We were pretty dedicated beforehand and it was still hard to let go of what we were comfortable with. If somebody was like thinking about that right now, you know, maybe write a list of your biggest fears and then how to avoid those fears, like solutions to those fears. And if they happen, like, how do you recover from those fears? That's something that we did. We realized that what we were scared of wasn't that bad. And now that we're actually on the road, it isn't that terrible. Like none of these fears came to fruition. And this is way more exciting and rewarding than we thought it would be. But it's also hard in ways that we didn't think it would be. So, you know, this is a big jump but you, know, you can do it. We hope this video was helpful for you. If you're planning on moving on the road full time and you're just curious what our first six months were like, let us know if you have any other questions in the comments below. And don't forget to like, subscribe, click the little bell thing to be notified when we post our next video. Thanks for watching. are gonna give a quick recap. Crap. I said recap. I said recap. All right, that's a blooper. I'm laughing because I was thinking recap. All right. <clears throat> hey guys, Jess here from Tin Can Creative. And today, Jay and I are going to do a, qu a quick, I can't even talk, babe. It's okay.
Cooper. Cooper's chewing, babe. Favorite boondocking spot is hands down rabbit bat. Cooper is chewing again, babe. Sorry, buddy. Sorry, buddy. Give him a greenie, babe. It's salt. It's silent. <laughs> it, sounds, it sounds like we have like an animal munching in the background because we do. It's Cooper. Any day now, Cooper, whenever you're done. to put him outside, babe. <laughs> uh, I'm here with Jess to talk a little bit about our first six months on the road and babe, what we learned. You're looking at the monitor and it looks funny. Oh, crap. <laughs> what was that? No scratching, babe. This comes up on the... Oh. <laughs> oh, the sun. Oh, damn. I'm glowing. Uh... Oh, there we go. I'm glowing again. 